And I'm very sure that especially PC players are waiting for the new monitors from LG. 240Hz refresh rate. That's exactly what a 4090 needs. Unless you play Cyberpunk with ultra details and ray tracing on, then you still can use your old 60Hz screen. No worries at all. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Markus and today I like to talk about the new OLED monitors from LG and they are really new because we have now 240 hertz refresh rate but this is not the only thing why I'm so excited about this let's talk about that because one of the most important features for me apart from the HDR capabilities perfect OLED black response time and so on and so on is that we have a curved design at least on a 45 inch monitor and this is a very very important feature for me because I learned over the years that a curved design is so much better for me, for me personally, in terms of working. I wouldn't say maybe for everything actually, even for playing games. A flat TV like the LG G2 and even we're talking about the high-end LG G2 here, I'm missing a curved design and I'm really looking forward for the 45-inch monitor from LG because if it is, yeah, delivering all the nice features what I'm having here on this TV in terms of maximum peak brightness, OLED black, I'm not concerned about that, and maybe better screen uniformity, then I know exactly what I'm getting. And I don't want to bring up a very big discussion between curved yes or no. I just like to quickly actually explain from my own experience what I had over the years and I experienced that a curved design and it really doesn't matter even on a very bad VA panel what I'm using including a curved design it's so much better for my eyes because of the design of the curved design because it just fits better for your view for the eyes okay it's very simple okay I can go into more details but that's how it is a flat screen is not opti optimal for your eye view okay let's say it like this that's why I'm looking forward to have a OLED screen with HDR peak brightness hopefully around 1000 nits and of course perfect OLED black response time no issue on OLED and curved wow and yes, of course, I'm very well aware of that we have the Alienware QD OLED monitor from Samsung. Not from Samsung, but the panel is from Samsung with the QD OLED technology. But we have a lot of disadvantages with this QD OLED panel, in my opinion. Like, yeah, the very bad black level appearance when there is light on. I know, I'm not quite sure if you heard about this, but because I think there is no polarizer on the panel it will not absorb light if there's light in the room like this here right now the panel will not appear black like this is that means if you watch a movie you will not see perfect OLED black not a problem when you turn off the light but it's still a problem in an environment like this but for me personally the biggest problem is color fringe and this is happening because of the RGB of the pixel layout from the QD OLED panels. On a WRGB panel like the LG OLED TVs, there is no issue like that. And that's why I like to have a monitor or TV with a WRGB pixel layout. Because when you um, display text like this, well, text actually from, let's say, Outlook, Excel, whatever, it's absolutely clear and sharp. When you compare this with the QD OLED, unfortunately, you have a lot of color fringing on the, yeah, on the edges from very fine text. And this is an absolutely no-go for me. That's why I'm looking forward to have a WRGB OLED monitor, curved HDR capabilities, and perfect black. So what are we getting now when we're spending $1,000 on a 27-inch monitor or $1,700 on a 45-inch monitor? And according to some websites, we're getting the latest MLA technology from LG, which is very good because it will improve brightness, it will improve viewing angle and a couple of more things. Hopefully also screen uniformity is much better than on my LG G2 because this is one of the things I would like to complain, please. Anyway, this is great news and we're getting on top a HDR brightness or an advertised brightness, let's say it like this, 
of 200 candela. And at this stage, I'm just assuming that this is the SDR peak brightness for a full white picture. Otherwise, it wouldn't make much sense to advertise those monitors as HDR10 compatible or supported. Um, what we have seen on the CES or what someone has seen and took some pictures is actually that according to those signs, the monitors will have a maximum peak brightness of around 1000 nits and full wide peak brightness 150 nits, which is much better than 200 nits for HDR. But again, I'm just thinking this is for SDR, but I'm wondering why I haven't seen, or maybe I was just too blind to read it, why I haven't seen the maximum peak brightness advertised on the official website from LG. What else do we get when we spend so much money on a monitor? We're getting two HDMI 2.1 ports and a DisplayPort 1.4. So in terms of connecting the Xbox and PlayStation 5, I do not expect any issue at this stage because no, there shouldn't be any issue. And I really hope there is no issue. In terms of the resolution, there is of course a difference between the 27 inch and the 45 inch. We have a native resolution of 1440p on the 27 inch and a slightly higher resolution 3440 by 1440p on the 45 inch. Both screens supporting the DCI-P3 color gamut of 98.5%, which is exactly the same as you can find it on the LG G2. Pixel response time is very important. The lower the number, the clearer your picture, especially with a higher refresh rate. 120 FPS on this OLED screen is amazing compared to my 144 FPS or Hertz screen in my office. VA panel, this is so much better. A very nice feature is that the LG monitors are getting pre-calibrated. That means you should have the best experience out of the box. But to be very honest, we have to wait till we see some reviews and we can actually see how good the calibration is because I'm assuming they just have one calibration for all the monitors they are selling. And don't get me wrong, it's better than nothing, but all the displays, all the displays are different. Okay, so to have the best or most accurate picture in terms of colors and grayscale, you would need to have a manual calibration or a calibration anyway. But thanks to LG, the monitors are capable of doing that either with Karman, I'm not quite sure about this, or maybe in different other ways, but I'm very sure LG is taking, yeah, it's serious to calibrate the monitors in a proper way. Okay, my friends, so I hope I covered everything what is important to know about this monitor. So what I don't know yet is actually what is in terms of HDR picture mode is, do we have something like HDIG? I have no idea. I haven't found it so far. Maybe I'm just too blind to read it. If you know more about this, put it in the comment section because this would be, of course, very important to, to know or very important to have, actually, to have HDIG on our HDR-capable screen. I would like to have it. Anyway, the other things is WRGB is, in my opinion, superior over QD OLED panels when we're talking about text or color fringe. Not in terms of the uh, color volume and brightness and stuff like that. On this, there is a uh, advantage on the QD OLEDs, of course. But when I'm talking about productivity or sitting very close to a screen, WRGB OLED is giving you the better experience. That's how it is. Um, we have HDMI ports, we have uh, display ports, we have enough features, in my opinion, to um, satisfy PC players, Xbox players, and PlayStation 5 players, and of course Switch. I'm very sure you can connect the Switch on it as well. If it makes sense, that's, that's a different story. Anyway, I think that's enough for this video. I hope you liked it, and if you like it, and if you liked it, then please do me the favor, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.